Hi everyone, welcome back and in this video I'll be giving you some information on what is stride. So in the previous video that I have taken, I gave you some information on what is threat modeling. So basically stride here is nothing but a threat modeling methodology. And if you see in the stride's threat model, it covers around six different threat categories. Okay, so for businesses when they need to identify various risk threats and vulnerabilities, Stride is a good starting point where they can, you know, cross verify and see what are the different threats that exist and they can, you know, tend to correlate and identify. So in Stride, S stands for spoofing identity, T stands for tampering, R for repudiation, I for information disclosure, D for denial of service and E for elevation of privileges. So in this video, we'll see what each one are in detail. So the first one is S, spoofing identity. So identity spoofing occurs when the hacker pretends to be another person or entity in order to commit fraud. So usually in order to commit a particular activity or to perform a particular action, you should be an authorized person, whether it's in a business or whether it's within an application. But when it comes to spoofing, since people do not have that privilege of committing some activity or some action, and get out some information what they do is they pretend to be someone in order to give information wrong information or in order to extract information so that is what spoofing is about and if you see examples we have all come across this particular attempt where we get emails sent from some false email addresses appearing to be someone else okay then you have calls you get constant calls from you know saying that they are from some banks asking for confidential information and then you even have fake websites so if you come across if you see very much in detail the url it won't would not it would be something that resembles the exact company but they are definitely not it's just a replication of these duplicate sites so all this lead to spoofing identity threat and typically here the sources they request for sensitive data and then they use it to their own advantage. So for example, as I said, when you get some emails, when you get some phone calls, definitely it's for extracting sensitive and personal or confidential information. So some people, they get trapped and this is how people tend to perform this particular attack on the audience. So this is about the spoofing identity. The next one is tampering. So tampering is the act of intentionally deleting or manipulating information through unauthorized channels. So we have heard about how people tamper electricity lines, about tampering about telephone lines. So these are some, you know, um, ways in which tampering occurs. Of course, in IT also, there is tampering that occurs where tampering is the act of intentionally deleting or manipulating information through unauthorized channels. So when there is something that's existing and you want to modify that, that particular action is called as tampering. So examples are web parameter tampering attack is based on modification of parameters exchanged between client and server in order to manipulate application data such as order details like price etc. Okay, so information definitely is sent between the client and the server. So in that particular process, there is some tampering done in order to manipulate the data, which are, is in form of parameters. So when you, what type of data gets mod, uh, you know, modified is sometimes when you have a shopping website, attackers can modify the order details, the price details for products, all this can be altered and it can be sent. So this is a form of tampering. And then tampering data is sent mostly to the applications through a post request. The next one is repudiation. So repudiation happens when an attacker performs an illegal or malicious activity in an application and then denies the action and also there's no way of tracking the activity. So it's not only that some the attacker or someone performs some illegal activity into the system, okay, after even performing that activity, they deny it. And even after denying, what happens is organizations and businesses, they have no way of tracking the activity. 
because they have already done some malicious activity they have already you know um modify the system in such a way they have uh, they go and tamper the logs where you cannot track activity so there's the companies also on their hand are left without any help so this is a form of repudiation attack so for example if you see repudiation attacks are frequent on email systems as very few systems they check outbound mails for validity okay so this can lead to various negative scenarios which causes the company or an individual's reputation to be damaged okay so what people do is they go in they mostly sometimes they alter the email systems okay and they send out emails on behalf of the company or on behalf of an individual so all this happens and it brings a very bad name it can be sometimes some you know um uh, portraying some bad image about the company or about an individual sending some you know non um, ethical information or posts on behalf of a person so because of this some once it's like a reputation uh, a reputation being damaged so that's how i relate to repudiation okay so this is of the repudiation or attack the next one is information disclosure so this can be found like mostly ev- uh, very commonly and information ag- disclosure happens when an application or a website or a user unintentionally or intentionally relieves reveals confidential data to unauthorized users now always as i said in the cia triad in the threat modeling video where information should be handled in a confidential manner there should be integrity that uh, has to be maintained and availability so this particular threat is belonging to two aspects which is the confidentiality and integrity okay confidentiality is when you do not you know disclose any um, personal identifiable sensitive information about a user or about any asset okay it always has to be maintained in a secure and confidential manner integrity is nothing but when you have all information you should choose to use it in the right way and not misuse that data and take advantage of it okay so whether you unintentionally reveal or you intentionally reveal confidential information to people who are not supposed to access that then it's a information disclosure threat and attack so examples is unnecessary exposure of sensitive information such as credit card numbers passwords personal identifiable information etc so we would have all used online applications online shopping application systems so most of the time you would have seen usernames and passwords sometimes the passwords is visible but this is somewhat information disclosure you would have seen credit card number sometimes being visible you would be able to see like your personal identifiable numbers ssn numbers being um, you know viewable all this is small examples of information disclosure so if you see here this would be the right way of handling this type of a you know a scenario but in most times this is all what i said was just small ways in which information is being disclosed but there are bigger attacks that are done where people try to steal credit card information or even people try to or organizations illegally they try to sell confidential information okay so all these are all relating to the information disclosure threat and attack the next one is denial of service so a denial of service dos which is also known as attack is an attack that aims to shut down systems or networks thus causing service unavailability to authorized users so imagine you're trying to do a uh, you know purchase on an online application shopping application or e-commerce website and though you have an account though you're an authorized user still if there's going to be a error that is thrown to you that is saying that the service is not you know permitted or we denied the service to you or the service is unavailable it's going to be very frustrating right so this is nothing but a attack where attackers try to you know um shut down networks or systems which cause services to be unavailable to the authorized users if it's even not available to unauthorized users it's fine but if it's not available to authorized users then it's going to be a lot of a chaos and the ways in which people uh, attackers and hackers they achieve this denial of services one is by 
overloading the target systems or networks with traffic. So there would be certain times that they feel they don't want a particular website or an application to serve people. At that time, what uh, the attackers or uh, hackers do is they overload the system and the network with a lot of traffic, thus making service unavailable. The next one is sending information that triggers a uh, crash. So it's not only that the network on its own is full of traffic, but also due to this overload, due to this overload of traffic and overload of requests and services, even it it goes to an extent where the target systems go and get affected okay because of the overload because of too many sessions etc so why you must be wondering why should people attackers do this kind of fun uh, you know denial of service attack sometimes it's just for the fun of it where you just want to you know overload and cause a traffic in a particular network for, for a particular application or it can be for a particular experiment that people did and then this went uh heavies and Another one is to damage a company's reputation. So if you don't want particular requests going to an application or you don't or you want to, you know, overload their systems, then these type of attacks are performed in businesses. So this is about the denial of service. And the last one is elevation of privileges. So through the elevation of privileges, an unauthorized or authorized user in the system can gain access to other information that they are not authorized to see. So a very common um, um, example is when an attacker intrudes the system and manipulates the system in such a way where he gains access to a particular role which can be the admin role so that they would be able to perform all actions in the system. So role manipulations or manipulating the system in such a way that you know the attackers gain overall privilege, super admin privileges, all these are elevation of privileges where based on whatever privilege they might have been having they want to elevate it they want to have more access to the system so this is what the attack is about so this is about stride i hope you got some information on what are the different categories of risk that stride portrays and if you found this video helpful please do give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do subscribe and do share your feedbacks thank you